This is going to be a quick video tutorial on how to feed a butterfly. I'm going to talk really fast. Uh, hopefully we can make this just in one take because I hate long Mandarin YouTube videos where they take a long time to get to the point. We have uh, monarch butterflies here just to establish our cred. We have about three dozen chrysalises there, uh, another dozen caterpillars that are still feeding. We, we have a Western. dozen here um, of chrysalises. We're in the San Francisco Bay Area where uh, it does get, it's pretty mild for the winters, but it does get to be cold around New Year's. We have some frosty nights, so for whatever reason, you may need to feed a butterfly. Hopefully you can learn something from this. We picked up a few pointers from doing this. We very often find that when it's rainy, we need to uh, shelter them for a day or three before we can release them. And so uh, we give them some um, boost of sugar from nectar, which is just Trader Joe's watermelon. Um, I wouldn't substitute cantaloupe or honeydew or something like that because the watermelon, those are too hard. The watermelon is kind of soft and you can macerate it and smash it up a little bit so they can get their proboscis into it. Um, it's good to get the watermelon maybe at room temperature. Definitely smash it up a little bit before. And it's, they really like it if you use the party toothpicks, you know, the cocktail toothpicks. It's a little more festive. They are butterflies after all. Um, so here we go. We're going to try two different techniques in one technique, I actually grab the butterfly like a, a folded uh, paper airplane, being very careful not to squish him, of course, but my wife has a different technique where she just lets the butterfly step onto her finger and then step off onto the watermelon. We do this in the mornings. Um, it's just part of their diurnal cycle. Butterfly nature is not to wake up in the middle of the night and have a midnight snack and go nectaring in the garden for flowers at midnight. So we have found that it works better in the morning. And here we go. Sometimes we let them go right away if the weather's nice, but sometimes we have to. Now make sure your, your hands are absolutely clean and dry when you do this. They have the most exquisite sense of smell in the animal kingdom. And if your hands, you've just been petting the cat and you have systemic, um, I'm sorry, it's hard to concentrate. If you have systemic pesticides that you use for flea control for your cats and then you pet the cats, are you doing the laundry? Okay, this one didn't work so well. Here, can you hold the camera mm -hmm. for a second? Sorry, we're just going to try to do this in one take. This one's a male, you can tell by the spots. Okay, so I'm going to do the thing where I hold and then so my wife is going to try to un... Oh, that is pretty good. He took right onto it. Right. <gasps> oh, there. oh, success. We right. didn't have to do anything at all. We were going to show you how to unfurl their proboscis with a toothpick, but that turned out not to be necessary. He found the food right away by tasting it through his feet, and he stuck his proboscis in. I hope you can see that. He's just nectaring like crazy right now, and sometimes they just stay there for half an hour. So we do elevate this a little bit so they're not right on the ground. We just put it on a soup can. We find they're pretty placid and tranquil when they're uh, actually hooked in. Um, I hope we can try to show you the technique with the um, toothpick, but basically their um, proboscises are curled up like a, a, well, like a spiral. And you just put the toothpick in with the spiral very gently of where their proboscis is and hook it out over the edge of the block, the cube of watermelon, because if it's just on the surface, it will naturally, the proboscis will naturally just want to sort of drag along the surface and coil back up again. But if you hook it over there, it kind of sticks in and, oh, we didn't, we didn't macerate this one. Let's, um, let's try to make it a little, it's good. It sort of breaks up the cellular structure and gives them like a little bit more mushiness. Okay. So my wife is now going to try her technique of just letting the butterfly step onto the fingers and that was really expertly done okay now Ooh. oh yeah he's feeling you can see the proboscis is curled up like a spiral i think we're having a lot of luck today he's going to do it okay two for two this is really great on the one hand this is really great that they're uh, feeding very avidly uh, on the other hand i kind of wanted to show you the technique with the toothpick but you get the idea you see how the proboscis was curled up in a spiral underneath their little snoots, and then you would just take the you would just take the toothpick and sort of gently uncurl it so that you hook it over the edge of the cube of watermelon. But it turned out for this take, uh, it wasn't necessary. 
they will probe around like that for a while until they get I wish we had smashed up that watermelon looks like he's having a hard time getting the proboscis in but maybe the watermelon surface is porous enough that he can get it in there. I have seen in those butterfly houses where you pay for admission and go in and admire the butterflies, they put slices of orange and banana and stuff on plates for the butterflies to eat. We haven't tried that. Um, we've basically just used watermelon. It's easily available. Even in winter, you can generally get it you know, imported. Trader Joe's has it in little cubes, but I guess you could just buy it and cut it up. Okay, now this one seems like he's curling and uncurling. I don't know if you can see that. He's curling and uncurling his proboscis. Oh, but he put it in again, okay. One other thing we find is that if you're gonna try the toothpick technique, um, take the toothpick and make sure that you sort of wipe it onto the watermelon so you get some juice on it. And then once you're in the process of unfurling their proboscis with the tip of the watermelon, uh, the tip of the toothpick, it tastes like watermelon and it sort of gets their interest. So I think that's about all there is to it. Let them do that as long as they want. Don't rush them. If it looks like they've stopped feeding, but he's like this one, for instance, has stopped feeding, then you can uh, try unfurling it, the proboscis with a toothpick. Hey, actually, that might be a good idea. He has stopped doing that. Maybe we could oh, no, illustrate. He's going back in. Oh, he is going yeah. back in. Yeah. It's so he's interesting. Done. It's almost like an elephant. Yep. It's like an elephant sort of coiling and uncoiling the trunk. So we're going to let them do this. That's our technique. Do it in the morning. Make sure your hands are absolutely clean and dry. Oh, that's a male too. You can see the two spots at the base of the wings there very clearly. If they have those two dots, then it's a male. If they don't, it's a female.